Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so we would we wanted to start by introducing ourselves. Um, my mm -hmm. name is Ida, and she's my classmate. Hi, I'm Leticia. And we want to thank you so much for your time and your efforts, and um, uh, it's an honor to have you with us right now. Of course, whatever I can do to help spread the word. Thank you so much. Uh, so we're gonna start with the questions. Is that okay? Absolutely. Okay. Um, at what age did you start playing basketball and why did you choose basketball? So I started playing wheelchair basketball around 14 or 15 years old. And just to provide a little bit of background, I actually had my accident when I was 11 months old. So I've been uh, disabled for most of, for all of my life. Uh, but I didn't find adaptive sports until I was about 14 or 15 years old. And that's when I started playing. Oh, okay. Uh, next question is, uh, what was your favorite year in your basketball career? And why is that, if you could tell us? Wow, that's, that is a really hard question. Um, I would say that I have a few favorite years. So, um, when I, when I first started playing, uh, that was a huge fork in the road moment for me because it became like what my entire life is built around. So just finding wheelchair basketball has been the most fun for me, the most impactful. Um, winning a gold medal in 2016 in Rio, that was a huge achievement and something I was working my entire career towards. Um, but then I have all of these years playing professionally in Germany where I've got the chance to travel around the world, meet amazing people. Um, so it's hard to pick just one. I would say that it's it's filled with some some really, really positive years and then some years that uh, I've had some struggles, but they've made me a better athlete and a better person for them. Mm, that's really nice. And my my third question is actually, uh, it comes back to your, to winning the gold medal mm -hmm. uh, since 1988. Um, like what, 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 what did it feel like? Uh, to be honest, um, I am one of those crazy athletes that hates to lose more than they like to win. So when, uh, we finally won a gold medal, it was my, you know, third Paralympics. Uh, it really just felt like relief. It felt like this huge weight was lifted off my shoulders. And then over the course of time and still to this day, um, you know, I still get a, a, a huge sense of happiness from winning it. But in the moment when, when we won that game, um, I wasn't happy. It was more like I was able to take a huge exhale and just kind of um, think about the entire journey and how, how, it, how long it took to get there. Um, so, yeah, so I would say that it, it was relief followed by a lot of, of happiness. Wow. So you're more of a competitive athlete. Yeah, yeah, it's not always healthy. <laughs> um, as my career winds down, I'm trying to embrace, you know, every moment that this game has provided me and not just focus on the wins and losses as much. But, um, you know, in the beginning and in the middle of my career, uh, I was very, very competitive and I did whatever it took for the, for the team to be successful, for sure. Okay. Um... Okay. okay, so we were wondering, uh, are there any particular role models or inspirations who inspired you to compete or like just in general? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know, I, my, my first role model has always been my father. Um, he's somebody who would do anything for anybody, even if he didn't know them. He's uh, I tell people he's like the best team sport athlete because he doesn't care about himself. He only cares about the people around him. So maybe not from a competitive standpoint, but just from a personal standpoint, he's obviously a huge role model of mine. Um, I have a few um, like people within the sport that maybe you and your classmates haven't heard of, but like Paul Schulte and Patrick Anderson, those are two um, really great players that I've played with and against both of them. And um, they've just, you know, been uh, very impactful on my career, my journey. From like an NBA standpoint, um, I would say that Kobe was is a huge influence of mine. And 
to be honest, uh, I actually hated Kobe as a player. I thought he was selfish and I thought he only cared about himself. But the reason he's such an inspiration to me was just because he accomplished so much on the basketball court. And he's this, you know, one of the best players to have ever played basketball. But it felt like the best years were in front of him, how he was helping the WNBA with uh, their awareness. He did a lot of work with wheelchair basketball and a few nonprofits that I work with in the States help raise awareness and do social media for wheelchair basketball in the U.S. So maybe not as a player, um, I wasn't the biggest Kobe fan, but as a person, um, he was just a, a, a basketball player and it didn't, didn't matter if you were a male or female, disabled, able-bodied, he just loved the game so much and he, you know, that his spirit is something that I, I have definitely been thinking of as my career on the court winds down and how I want to impact the game moving forward. Rest in peace. That, that's amazing. And your, your dad also sounds like such a supportive parent. Yeah, yeah he's um, all right. Yeah. Um, and how was it like growing up with a disability? And did it have an impact on your childhood since because you got it when you were like 11 mm -hmm. months, old, uh, months old? Yeah, absolutely. It had a huge impact on my life. Um, you know, I've always been the person that I don't, I don't worry about the things that I can't control. So I, I was never the person that got down because I had to do things differently. The, the, only, the only part that, that made me really sad growing up as a kid was, was when people thought I couldn't do something just because I had to do something differently. Um, I remember I, I wasn't able to play able-bodied sports with my friends growing up because you know the school board and the parents thought that it, it wasn't safe for me to play, for their kids to play. And that was the first time in my life that I ever felt disabled. You know, I just, I was just a kid who wanted to play with their friends. And here are these people who don't know anything about me, don't know anything about my abilities, basically telling me that I can't, I can't play with my friends. So that was, um, you know, it, there was a lot of little moments like that growing up that really made me feel disabled. It didn't come from me. It didn't come from my parents. And to be honest, living with a disability is not easy. You know, you're, you're constantly reminded of, of your differences and your insecurities in this world. But that's why I'm so grateful I found wheelchair basketball was because I was able to find a community that allowed me to embrace those insecurities and embrace those differences. And ultimately, I'm trying to, you know, leave the next generation with more opportunities than what I had growing up. Because, you know, when I was a kid, there, there was no social media, there was no Facebook, there, were, there were just weren't opportunities to find adaptive sports. And now that we have all this information at our fingertips, um, you know, I never want a kid with a disability to be left behind and to not find his or her community that, that will allow them to embrace who they really are. Yeah, that's really nice to hear. So it was like pretty overwhelming, like you had over, overwhelming moments since people would judge you without really knowing you when you were a kid. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And, you know, when you're a kid, you don't you don't know why people are, are saying you can't do something that you're just you just feel bad because you can't go out and play with your friends. Um, but as you get older, you I, I, I've tried to to use those, you know, maybe negative or hard experiences to my advantage and to try to motivate me to have an impact on this community in a positive way. That's amazing. Next question is, uh, what is a piece of advice you would give to a young boy or a girl that has the same disability as yours? Yeah, um, the piece of advice I, I always give to um, any any kid or any athlete is to never ever be afraid to lose um you know that i'm somebody you know from, from a basketball perspective you know i don't make every shot i don't um win every game i, I don't have 100 of these amazing days but the the idea that you have to take that shot the idea that you have to be vulnerable in the game in order to to win or lose, 
just taking the taking a risk or taking a chance is what is most important and to not you, you don't want to shy away from something because you think that oh maybe i can't do this or maybe i won't be good at this you have to try things you have to experience all that life has to offer and ultimately i i think that's how you grow as a as a person um and i've you know when i talk to basketball athletes i always tell them that i have become a great basketball player because I've lost a lot of my career. And those are the moments that I learned from. It's not, it's not the successes that I learned from, it's all the losses. So I just tell kids to never be afraid to try something new, never be afraid to lose because those are the moments that you grow. And that piece of advice also goes to everyone in general. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I wish people would take more risks and I wish people would learn to get out of their communities, you know, experience all that life has to offer. Um, so that's, that's what I tell kids. Yeah, that's, that is a very good piece of advice. And um, how many, how many teams have you changed during your career? Yeah, well, um, so I played for a junior team in high school, and then I went directly to university. Um, I went from university to playing professionally here in Germany uh, with uh, the club team that I was with, I'm with now, and that I played for for five years previously. And then I played for the Knicks, the New York Rolling Knicks. Um, and then Team USA, obviously. So I don't know, six, is that six, 17, something like that. Um, I've met a lot of great people along the way. And my favorite part of, about my career is I've gotten to play and meet people all across the world. So um, I like to tell people, I grew up in New York City. And when I went to the University of Illinois, which is in the Midwest in the States, um, it was the first time I ever saw a cow, like in real life, because we don't have many cows in New York City. So uh, each experience has, has shown me a different part of the world, a different part of life. And that's what I'm uh, most grateful for from for this journey. Um, and how have you managed to practice during this pandemic? Yeah, you know, at the very beginning of COVID, um, I did a lot of interviews with sponsors and with nonprofits, just, you know, trying to motivate everybody, just trying to be like, hey, no excuses. You know, I I live with a disability. We, my every day is about no excuses. You know, you have to do what you can. But after a year, I mean, training in COVID sucks. Like it's just, it's just not fun. There's only um, so many planks and so many push-ups that you can do inside. Uh, and we can do it safely. But um, that's actually the reason why I moved back to Germany because in Germany, um, wheelchair basketball is considered a professional sport. So we get tested every week, games are still happening, and we can still practice every single day. Whereas in the States, it's wheelchair basketball is a recreation sport. So we just don't have the infrastructure. And um, I'm still training to compete in the Tokyo 2021 Paralympic Games, which is going to happen in a few months. So I told myself that if I want to be the best athlete that I can be, I have to train full time. And the only place you can really do that right now is in Europe. So that's why we came back. Yeah. And I saw a few of your interviews in the beginning of COVID and you seemed really like positive when everybody was like trying to tell you that it, it's hard and how do you manage? You kept on like showing the positive side of everything. And that's, that's really nice. Um, and what would you say is your biggest accomplishment? Good question. You know, I think that my biggest accomplishment is yet to come. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, I really embrace what, you know, like somebody like Kobe was talking about how, you know, I've accomplished everything I've wanted to accomplish on the court throughout my career. I've won championships everywhere I've been and winning a gold medal in Rio was, that was like the climbing to the top of the mountain. Um, so on the court, I feel like I've accomplished I've accomplished everything, but it's off the court and the impact that I can have and making sure that the awareness of adaptive sports and wheelchair basketball reaches all across the world. Um, I have uh, 
wonderful opportunities to coach camps all across the world, like in from ranging from Tokyo all the way to Africa. I've, um, I definitely want to become more engaged on social media so um, I can be um, an outlet for, for kids who maybe they see wheelchair basketball for the first time on Instagram and think, oh my God, this is something I want to do. I want to help fundraise for sporting equipment because, you know, the average wheelchair basketball chair, you know, it costs maybe three to 5,000 US dollars. So um, it's definitely not cheap to be an adaptive sport athlete. So there's a lot of things that I want to do. Um, I would say that uh, the best is yet to come. Yeah, and we'll, we'll do our best to try and spread out the word. And especially thanks to this project, it's going to be, it's going to help us a lot. Thank you. Um, last but not least question, if you had a chance to live a normal life, would you like, would you take it? Oh, absolutely not. Um, doing things normally is, is not who I am as a person. Um, I get, I get bored very easily. I have a, I have a little bit of ADD and I, um, you know, doing things the traditional way, it's just never been who I, who I was. And that's not because I have a disability and I have to do things differently. Um, if I was an able body and I never went through my accident and I never played wheelchair basketball, I would still not live a normal life. Um, I'm somebody who, uh, who likes to be pushed, who likes to um, experience new things, experience new people, visit new cultures, um, learn new languages. It's just who I am. So uh, I don't like the word normal. I don't think that that's something that we should ever aspire to, especially when you have a disability. Your goal should be to stand out. Your goal should be to, to show the world the best version of yourself. And you know, because I have a disability, maybe I have a, a bigger platform than I would have if I was an able-bodied person. Um, but that doesn't mean that um, that doesn't mean that having a disability should hold me back. It's, uh, I, I when, when I talk to really really little kids who love superhero movies and stuff, I tell them that my disability is my superpower. It's the thing that makes me special. It's the thing that people remember. And I can choose to either let, let it hold me back from living a wonderful life or I can embrace it and I can use it to my advantage. So that's what I choose to do. So um, yes, I definitely don't like the word normal, but I wouldn't live a normal life uh, in any way. Yeah. Um, and for our last question, if you, oh. Oh, yeah, for the last question, uh, what would be a key advice to succeed? Uh, the, key, the key advice to succeed is something I already touched on. It's learning from losses and not being afraid to, to, to lose because that's, like I said, that's where I've learned to be a better person, a better teammate, a better athlete, and a better leader, all from losing, all from these negative experiences but um, I wouldn't be who I am today without those negative experiences. So don't be afraid to try something new. Don't be afraid to, to be unsuccessful because that just means that you're uh, more prepared to be successful the next time. Yeah. Uh, well, that was it for our questions and our interview. Mm -hmm. And we really, like, we seriously can't thank you enough. It's an honor to have you with us and it's an honor um, that you did this with us. Thank you so, so much. Thank you for your time. Yeah, guys, thanks for reaching out. I hope the project goes well. Um, yeah. And if I'm, I'm, I'm always around if you need me, <laughs> I'm always around if you need me again. And uh, yeah, it was great to meet you. Thank you so much and stay safe these days. All right, take Good care. In Tokyo. Have a nice Thank day. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye -bye.